and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. Good roll program confirmed. Challenger now heading down range. January 28th was the final heartbreaking flight of the Space Shuttle Challenger, and a tragedy that could have been avoided. Engines beginning throttling down now at 94%. Normal throttles uh, for most of the flight, 104%. People around the world, including millions of children, watched as seven astronauts, Dick Scobie, Michael Smith, Ronald McNair, Ellison Onizuka, Judy Resnick, Gregory Jarvis, and Krista McAuliffe, braved the frigid cold temperatures and wild winds to fly one last time. 257 feet per second, altitude 4.3 nautical miles, downrange distance three nautical miles. What should have been a celebration of our achievements in spaceflight quickly turned into heartbreak. Challenger, go and throttle up. Challenger, go and throttle up. One minute, 15 seconds, velocity 2,900 feet per second, altitude nine nautical miles, downrange distance seven nautical miles. The devastated families needed answers for what went wrong and how those freezing temperatures and wild winds played a role. When Space Shuttle Challenger launched that fateful day in January 1986, the weather was awful. No other shuttle mission launched in conditions anywhere near what occurred that morning. Florida was experiencing some unusually cold temperatures around 18 degrees Fahrenheit the night before launch, and wind and ice were causing problems with huge icicles forming on the launch platform. Engineers were concerned that ice could break off and damage the vehicle, and engineers for Morton Thiokol that worked on the shuttle's solid rocket boosters were very concerned that the rubber O-rings sealing the booster segments would not be flexible enough come launch time and would not properly seal the joints. In fact, the engineers had actually seen O-ring blow-by occur seven times prior to the Challenger disaster, with the first instance observed after STS-2. In all those cases, the secondary O-ring prevented a major disaster, but the fact that this was so common was one of the reasons why mission managers ignored or minimized engineers' concerns about O-ring failures for the Challenger launch. So what was different in January 1986? The ice problem was mostly resolved before launch, but the extreme cold no doubt still played a role. At least a few of the SRB engineers thought that the shuttle stack would explode instantly as soon as the solid rocket boosters ignited but they were relieved when it seemed to launch just fine. Now, though, the boosters had to last for two minutes. Solid rocket boosters, in general, can't be shut down or throttled once they're ignited. You also can't jettison them until they're done, otherwise they could crash into the vehicle. And it seemed like Challenger was going to be just fine, but what they didn't know, though, was that one of the boosters was hanging on by a thread. For the first two seconds after launch, an O-ring seal, both the primary and the secondary, did in fact fail. But it's believed that the breach was quickly sealed by aluminum oxides from the burning propellant. This is what allowed the flight to continue. The final failure may have been due to the vehicle responding to severe upper-level wind shear. The winds that day at 45,000 feet were measured at nearly 125 knots. As the vehicle ascended, there was also a change in wind direction of about 80 degrees, making the forces imparted on the vehicle very abrupt. Challenger experienced the strongest wind shear ever felt during a space shuttle launch, but technically the winds were within design limits and not a direct cause for the failure. Challenger experienced severe wind shear from 37 seconds to 64 seconds, which forced the shuttle's engines to perform course corrections in response. This led to flexing in the boosters, which investigators believe may have caused the aluminum oxide plug to break free in the middle of those winds, around 58 seconds into the flight. This is what ultimately sealed their fate, because while those boosters were firing, 
there was no option to abort. The now leaking booster caused tank ruptures and structural failure, which led to the destruction of the vehicle. Contrary to some popular beliefs, the shuttle actually didn't explode, it just disintegrated rapidly. It's not known whether or not the astronauts survived the initial disintegration, but there are some that believe they did. Would Challenger have survived if it weren't for those upper level winds? There's no way to know. What's certain is that no one survived in the end. Dick Scobie, Michael Smith, Ronald McNair, Ellison Onizuka, Judy Resnick, Gregory Jarvis, and Krista McAuliffe. These brave astronauts tragically gave their lives to further spaceflight, and today's spaceflight is much safer because of their sacrifice. So it's important to remember them on this January 28th and every January 28th, for we will never forget that devastating day in 1986. The crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger honored us for the manner in which they lived their lives. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them this morning, as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye and slipped the surly bonds of Earth to touch the face of God. Thank you. <laughs>